Hi, I'm Roger Kornberg. Aaron Clark and I were interested in a class of proteins called histones and how they interact with DNA. There are five different kinds of histones, H1, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Histones bind to DNA to form the chromatin, which is the colored material, in the nucleus of higher cells. In non-dividing cells, the chromatin is dispersed throughout the nucleus. During prophase of cell division, the chromatin condenses into a visible structure we know as chromosomes. This electron micrograph shows a cell in metaphase. The chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell. The presence of histone proteins in the nucleus of higher cell was part of a debate in 1940s about which molecule, DNA or protein, is the hereditary material. Of course, DNA turned out to have that distinction. However, X-ray diffraction studies later showed that histones play an important role in providing structure for the DNA helix. Remember Maurice Wilkins? In 1964, he and Vittorio Luzzatti noticed that chromatin has a repeating pattern with intervals of about 100 angstroms. And we know and 1 angstrom equals to 10 to the power minus 10 meters. This repeat is different from the repeating patterns of DNA itself. Aaron Clark also saw similar extra diffraction patterns in chromatin. This repeat suggests that histones play an important role in packaging of the DNA. I am Dean Hewish and I am Leek Bargoen. In 1973, while we are at Flinders University in South Australia, we got a result that supported the idea of DNA packaging. We isolated the enzyme DNA nuclease from the liver cells and used uh, it to digest the chromatin structure. We electrophorize the digested chromatin material. and we saw a regular pattern of bands on the gel. This is a photo of the gel we ran in 1973. We figured out that the bands were multiples of smallest size fragments, later determined to be about 200 base pairs. So these repeated bands corresponded to 200 BP, 400 BP, 600 BP, 800 BP and so on. We concluded that the histones are distributed evenly on the DNA and at points uh, where they bind protect the DNA from nucleus digestion. This is a complementary different, uh, completely different from the digestion pattern of naked DNA without histone. Naked DNA digested with nucleus produces a similar, a smear of thousands of different size fragments as you can see in the left hand side. So, Clearly the difference is shown in case of naked DNA digestion with nucleus and chromatin DNA digestion with the nucleus. Based on the extra diffraction patterns and the nucleus experiments, chromatin was proposed to be DNA and the histone cores it wrapped around. The 200 BP repeat observed after nucleus digestion corresponds to 200 base pair of DNA wrapped around each histone core. The 100 angstrom measurement from X-ray diffraction patterns is a wide of the histone core and the DNA. My colleagues and I did experiments that confirmed this model and we also figured out the arrangement of histones in the core. We individually purified the histones from the DNA. We found that H2A, H2B tend to stick together and do H3 and H4. If we mixed H2H to be complex with H3H4 complex and then added NACT DNA, we got the same extra diffraction as the chromatin. More analysis revealed that each histone course has 8 proteins, 2 copies each of H2H2B and H3H4 complexes. This histone core with wrapped DNA is called a nucleosome. This is an electron micrograph of a chromatin. 
The string is called the 10 nanometer fiber and the beads are called the nucleosomes. But where is the H1 histones? It turns out H1 is not part of the histone core. Instead, it binds between the nucleosome to give even more structure to the chromatin. H1 sits just outside of each nucleosome and interact with H, the H1 in the next nucleosome. At higher salt concentrations, the 10 nanometer fiber is further compacted into a 30 nanometer fiber. The DNA helix is already twisted by adding twist to make this nucleosome and solenoid structure. The DNA is supercoiled this time. Even more organization is involved in maintaining the condensed chromosome. Loop of DNA are attached to protein called scaffold made up of several non-histone proteins. The scaffold maintains the shape of a chroma chromosome. Even in the absence of histone proteins, they can maintain the shape of this chromosome. Chromosomes are relatively one continuous piece of DNA. In this electron micrograph, you can see the DNA strands from one chromosome after the histones have been removed. Up to six feet of DNA is packed to fit into the nucleus of one cell. The DNA is first wrapped around histone cores to form nucleosomes and the 10 nanometer fiber. The 10 nanometer fiber is further coiled into the 30 nanometer fiber where six nucleosomes make one turn. The 30 nanometer fiber is often looped onto protein scaffold when chromosomes condense and that's how a total chromosome is being made.